African Institute of Leadership and Governance. So welcome to this special class in applied leadership. Uh, welcome in this special class. And um, today is the 12th of um, May. We are starting a new class. We've got over 47 students that are participating in this class. Now, people have taken different time zones because this is also on an international platform. So we have people who have taken different time zones. Others are doing it in as recorded. Others are doing it live. So for those of you who have come on this morning, you are receiving it live. Okay. Uh, feel free. Let me do the house rules quickly. I welcome those who are joining. I know that there are people from Zambia. There is on the corner button, there is what says private chat. On the private chat, please feel free to type if you can hear me. I wanted to make sure now that everybody is getting the sound correct and loud and clear. So go on the private chat. And every one of you who is on now, can you quickly type and say you can hear me? If you can hear me, then we are good to roll and we are good to go. You can also tell me if you fail to tell us where you are. Um, remember that this course, it's not available to everybody. And uh, it's specifically for those of you who have uh, decided to take on this academic journey in leadership. You cannot lead by chance, but rather you can lead after having enough knowledge. You can lead effectively. So this very moment, allow me to share briefly about myself. Uh, okay, for those of you who wish to get to know, Okay, somebody's saying the network is a bit jumpy, but I can hear you, sir. All right, thank you very much for that feedback. Um, as long as the sound is all right, I think the network, it has to do with uh, what has been happening here in KwaZulu-Natal. You know, the towers were destroyed during the, the, um, during the floods and... Uh, uh, I, I'm very sure that the network seems to be getting better and better by day. So uh, as long as the sound is clear, then that's perfect. We can move on. The most important thing is the sound being clear. All right. So uh, let me know, those of you who are uh, on, in class uh, from your side, Miss Mwanza, I see you are on. Can I hear feedback? Uh, can I hear feedback? Okay. Lena, Joseph, can I hear feedback? And uh, the rest of you that are go coming on, I want to hear feedback that we are moving on well. So a little bit about me. Well, I'm the director here at the African Institute of Leadership and Governance together uh, with a number of other directors. I'm privileged to lead the baton at the moment. Uh, I know that uh, some other great leaders will have to take over from me uh, at some point soon so that we can also focus on many other things which we have to do. But I'm very grateful to lead a very strong team of academicians and people who are into influence, influencers and so on and so forth. 
Uh, I am a trained and qualified trainer in leadership. Uh, I have uh, worked under very strict leadership gurus uh, across the globe. I've saved from various, various portfolios in leadership, uh, both on uh, the academic part and also on the practical part. So I qualify to stand with you and talk to you. I have saved uh, with uh, uh, under the leadership team of Dr. John Maxwell, who is on the top 20 leadership gurus. I have uh, worked with uh, Dr. Sam Chad, uh, who was the chancellor of Bella Heights University in Atlanta, Georgia, in the USA. And uh, I have saved with a great team of leaders from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. I have also saved under a great team of a Christian organization called uh, Walk Through the Bible under the leadership of Dr. Bruce Wilkinson. I was uh, uh, the regional trainer for Southern Africa. And uh, I have saved uh, under Rebuild the Wars Network in about 16 countries where we had expanded that it is from there that the African Institute of Leadership and Governance was birthed and we began to move on. So that's a little bit more about me. I'll be your guide. And we are looking at that. We've got great leaders uh, from universities. Like today, uh, those of you, you were welcomed by a video clip from Dr. Gabriel Sakile Manono, who is uh, one of our academic directors right here at the African Institute of Leadership and Governance. He couldn't be with, with you in the online classes. Why? Because Dr. Gabriel Manono, at the moment, as I'm speaking, he is also uh, doing a lecture in Mpangeni, uh, a live lecture uh, to some entrepreneurs in Mpangeni. Mpangeni, some of you who are outside South Africa, it's in the northern part of KwaZulu-Natal. We've got Dr. Herman Bamata, who is going to also carry you through in some of the lectures that will be coming. And at the moment, he can't be with you live uh, online because he's in a live session with a school of entrepreneurship at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. So we network with all these universities and we work together. So you are embarked on a very great journey. I clap for you. All right. <laughs> I clap for you. You can clap for yourself. All right. So congratulations once more. Thank you for the feedback that I can hear you clearly. So I congratulate you once more So for choosing applied leadership. Now, remember that on all these subjects that we are doing, what I want to remind you is that you are expected to write assignments. You are expected to timely submit your assignments. You are also expected to attend every class. It simply means that if you are going to attend class uh, for the next five classes and then you miss the other five, it will simply mean that you are likely to lose your registration. You are likely to lose your registration. So you will also be receiving what we call uh, handouts and uh, the handouts, they will be coming to you every after every session that we have via your email address. So make sure you have submitted a correct email address so we can give it to you and you can be able to get your, uh, you can be able to get your, um, uh, your handouts on time. Finally, you are also expected to submit your questions uh, via your email or the WhatsApp number that has been uh, uh, communicating with everybody, every student and um, we forward them to our relevant authorities based on the lectures. So we want to go on right now and begin with our subject that we are looking at on uh, applied leadership. We are going to take on this journey and go into this course for the next few minutes we are going to discuss applied leadership and we want to make sure 
we want to make sure that you get on what is important and imperative for you. Uh, we want to make sure you get what is important and imperative for you. So the network, okay, I hear somebody is saying, uh, I can hardly hear you uh, due to network. Let me say log in again, okay? Log in again, all right? So we want to make sure that all the students have got the, the same benefits of, um, uh, of being in class. So at this particular time, we are looking at applied leadership and we are going to focus on uh, this special subject uh, where we can uh, now discuss on what is needed to be done. And as leaders, we are going to focus on that. So at this particular time, allow me to uh, open up the, 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 the welcoming remarks, which we have said, welcome to um, African Institute of Leadership and Governance. Uh, and um, we, on, on this, at this particular time, we, we have already had a welcome, a welcoming remarks from Dr. Manono. He has uh, welcomed us uh, at this, uh, on this uh, platform where we are all now uh, comfortable. And so we are sure that each one of you, he is um, in class and each one of you, he is experiencing what we are all experiencing. A very welcome uh, from our leader at the Institute, Dr. Manono has welcomed each one of us. And at this particular time, we are now uh, doing what we call a screen share on our uh, subject oh. and our discussion for today. So ladies and gentlemen, again, allow me to take you into uh, this whole course. Um, we are going to look at this course in various levels. Remember, you've got up to 14, 14 modules that you are going to do in six weeks. Remember that this is going to be, welcome uh, Ms. Mwanza again, welcome. Sorry for that, for that breaking of your network. Um, to make your network easy, it's fine. You can switch off the video so that the sound is clear if the video is distracting you. On your side, you can mute the video and remain with the sound. Maybe it gets to be strong. Uh, okay, just make sure that you can hear us and indicate. So we are now looking at the course uh, itself where we want to uh, focus on the, the, the course itself. Yeah. Let's go. Let's look at course introduction. Let's look at course, in, course introduction. The purpose, okay? Uh, by the end of the day, you're going to get this, uh, this handout, okay? The purpose. The applied leadership uh, training level is one of the flagship leadership development intervention of the African Institute of Leadership aimed at enhancing the capacity of public leaders in a democratic and developmental state. All right, let's move on. What is our target group? These are things we have spoken about before, but we will quickly just go through. Our target group, uh, the target group, the program is aligned to the senior management services. SMS competency framework and aims to equip participants with necessary knowledge and skills to perform effectively as senior managers and team leaders or organizational leaders. It is also aimed at enhancing capabilities in practical and application of leadership thoughts. Furthermore, it prepares participants for the challenges that they are likely to encounter as managers and leaders. Let's go. 
What is our program framework? Let's look at that. APL level one is presented over a minimum of six weeks. Minimum. And this is compressed, guys. A minimum six weeks. Module one of three days contact session, each in a cycle of five weeks. So now we are already in module one. So that is why uh, we are taking a bit of time. Where we are going, it's going to accelerate because <laughs> we will be looking at things in a more complicated and sophisticated way. So now we are trying to start the class. So please, we, we are already in module one to orient you on how it goes. So a two-day compulsory orientation session is held before the presentation of the first module. Now, for this particular module, we have canceled that two days because of time. So I'm just trying to compress everything. And immediately after I finish this, we are going into lecture one. Are we together? Okay. Listen to this. International learners are supported by an e-learning platform for the duration of the program. That is where you are right now. Those of you who are on this platform, that is where you are right now. I know that it is being recorded for the students that are going to come at night. So you who are on now, you are privileged compared to those that will come at night because the ones that will come at night will have to go through a recorded one. But you will go through this one and then you will also receive the recordings. Okay. Let's go. International learners are supported by e-learning e platform, which is this one. The modules enables learners to complete and submit formative and sub, uh, summative post courses assignments. This is what I was speaking at the beginning. That your assignments will be given and then you submit at the end or before the next class. You submit. All right. At least you can hear my accent when you get, uh, uh, we, we've got uh, somebody who's going to teach you in uh, uh, change management, uh, Professor Trust. Professor Trust is going to teach you in change management. So my accent is at least African. Professor Trust is going to go raw, 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 raw. So you, you better catch up quickly. Make sure you've got, <laughs> you've got your boppers and everything to write. Okay. Schedules can be customized according to the student's needs or the client uh, needs. That is why we are here right now. That is why we are here right now. Because we know that these needs uh, can be taken. So you can be three, four, ten. Remember, we've got about 47 of you, but we have got three, four, ten, twenty. Each class is broken in that, that level. So as you are going through this, don't feel lazy. If you find yourself, you're five, you're two, you're ten, go on. Because by the end of the day, six weeks is too short for all what we have. Are we together? Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me again to proceed by stating this morning that as we are moving and progressing, it is important for us to look at issues as the way they are. It's important for us to look at issues the way they are. Um, let me begin by going straight now into the subject itself called applied leadership. Let's go straight now into the session itself, applied leadership. Let us begin with lecture one. We are going to begin with lecture one. And I want you to follow me. And I want you to be very close because as we go into lecture one, 
I want each one of you to make sure you are writing your notes, your personal notes, and you are taking enough detail. Because by the end of this program, like as I have said, we are going to be getting, I'm sure, uh, what we call assignments. So let's go to module one of our program, Applied Leadership. Applied Leadership. Module one in Applied Leadership. Let's go. Introduction to leadership. Of course, we are going to start right here. Introduction to leadership. Many questions are asked about leadership and we are given those questions to say who is a leader, what's a leader. But for you as a student in leadership, as a student of leadership, these are things I will echo to you. You can see the diagram on your chart right there. On the chart there, there is a diagram. The first one you see the head of a, uh, the head, uh, of a person and some kind of stuff going on in there. So I am saying be purposeful. Be purposeful. The next one, we see a graduate there with the goggles and everything. I'm saying be future-oriented. You know, when somebody just graduates from a university, you know what? They see the future is bright and they shout, wow. People dance and sing. Why? Because they are now future oriented. They can't wait to get to the next level. So they feel they are going now to achieve everything that they dream will be achieved in a minute or in a second. They can't wait to write that application later. <laughs> so be future oriented okay this is what we call future oriented the second one okay we see the brain is going on the lights the sparks are going pa, 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 pa. okay leadership there what does it mean that diagram the, 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 that picture there or that image there is saying and everything is linked to each other can you see it says be innovative so we are going to look at innovative thinking at some point, all right? So, but it's saying, be innovative. Then it says, it leaks, then you see a shoot going in there in the dark. Doom! What does that mean? Be results driven. Be results driven. Oh, yes. All this comes together, but we can see where the two people are shaking hands with the briefcase. The business is signed in and all that. But it tells us something here that right there and then be collaborative. As a leader, you must be collaborative. Then lastly, uh, we see a power button, dun -dun, a push button. What does that mean? That push button is telling us be empowering. These are our competencies at our institute. For all of you that have enrolled in the African Institute of Leadership and Governance Applied Leadership course, make sure you understand this because this is called applied leadership. It's not theoretical only, but it's where we give you tools and you go out and you implement. We are doing module one. Let's go. The next uh, diagram there comes in with the definition of leadership. The definition of leadership. The question has been asked all the time, what is leadership? Remember, I loved when I worked with uh, Equip, and it's a very strong organization, and we sit to eat that Dr. John C. Maxwell defines leadership by saying, leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. I end quote. We also find leadership to be very interesting. In a school of thought, we discover that leadership is a practice or an ability through which individuals can influence and guide others. Let me read that again. 
Leadership is a practice or an ability through which individuals can influence and guide others. That is not all. There can be many definitions of leadership, of course. But all it drives us that leadership has to do with individuals, with people, individuals, with people, with animals, with what? But we see somebody taking the role of the lead. I will define it in my word. Leadership, I've always said, it is being able to handle pressure. That's why it comes from the word lead. The word lead, lead is a heavy metal. When you use a lead to close the pot of beans, and when it's boiling, it can't push it out. So it's able to handle pressure. That is, and being in control when things are going chaotic, you are in control. That is what is known as leadership. There are many definitions, of course, of leadership. Ding, ding. There is some people, three faces of people there. I hope you can follow this through and you are writing down. Now, I want you to pay close attention at each picture. 30 seconds. All right. We have paid attention to each picture that is on our platform. The first picture is of a handsome young dude. I'm speaking to this South African English, right? Or African English. A handsome young man. His eyes are focused straight. Can you see that? Then he is attentive. He's optimistic. He's enthusiastic. The young man looks confident. The young man looks, yes, we can. Barack Obama's statement. This young man, when you look at him, he's confident that whatever comes, he's ready to face it. He's not shaken. When you look at the age, well, we can see that the young man is between 35 and 25. When you look at this young man, is between 35, 25. Let's focus on him again. Look at him. His ears are showing. Can you see that? His ears are showing. I want you to follow these are what we call leadership images. His ears, both ears, you can see them. Meaning that he is attentive. He is attentive. He is focused. His eyes, his ears, they are looking straight, boom, into your face. Can you see that? Let's move on. What does this picture say to us in leadership? This tells us that this young man is an active candidate of leadership. He's an active candidate unto leadership or of leadership. This is the image we say, I can lead. At this particular time, the young man feels, I can lead. He does not doubt his leadership systems he does not question because he is confident we have said all that. So this is what we call the I can lead posture. The young man feels I can lead. Okay, let's go to the next picture. Dong! There is a beautiful woman out there. But let's look at this picture. One hand is on her cheek. Her eyes are in the sky. Boom! We can't see her ears. They are covered in the hair. 
When you see her eyes, they are facing the sky. And look at her mouth. It's not straight into your face. When we look at the age of this young, beautiful woman, we can suggest she's between the age of 35 or 30 to 45, 50 there. 30, 45, 50 there. Mm -hmm. What does this image tell us? When we look at this beautiful lady, the image when the eyes are focused somewhere, she is looking behind. She has tried many things. Okay? When we look at her ears, they are covered in the past. She's hearing from the inner voice. She's not just hearing from everyone speaking, but she's hearing from the inner voice. Are we together? When we look at this woman, she has tried this, it has worked and failed. She tried that, works and fails. She tried this, works and fails. Then, when we look at her, this picture, we call it the passive candidate. We call this the passive candidate. Why do we call her the passive candidate? It's because she's not as enthusiastic as the first picture. So this one is filled with fear, yet she's still confident in the inside. But she's filled with a lot of experience. So the question now for her at this level is, can I lead? This person now feels, can I lead? So we call the passive candidate. Oh, wow. Let's go to the next picture. Picture number three. The third picture tells us um, it tells us a number of things. Here is a woman. She's got a smile on her face. Okay. Her hands are on the cheeks. Her eyes are focused. Her ears, she's touching them. Let's go and look at this picture again. This picture tells us she has had a good time. She has failed and she has risen above the failure. She has tried many things and experimented and she has come out with results. She is confident not because of the future. She's confident because of where she's coming from. This woman, when we look at her age, it tells us between 45 to 60 and a bad. And when we see at her, she looks, I have made it. At this particular time, this picture we define not seeking candidate. The not seeking candidate simply means established. In other words, she's saying, I am leading. In other words, she's saying, I am leading. Okay. So, if this was on the definition of leadership, please, this diagram, pay attention to it. You might just find it 
in your assignment or in your questionnaires. So make sure you pay close attention to it. Okay, let's go. I want us to look at the next one. I want us to look at the next one. All right, uh, let's go to, we are still on what is leadership. Therefore, A, leadership as a social contrast. There is no consistent view of what leadership is or what leaders do. B, leadership problematize the notion of the objective, of the objective knowledge and a single truth. There is no solid understanding of it. Leadership is more vague and multifaceted. I hope you have understood what I'm saying. See, leadership isn't just a phenomenon. It is an industry, or it's an industry. That was number C. D, there are so many definitions of leadership because our ideas of what leadership is developed through our social interactions. We share perceptions of reality with people in similar lives as us. Often, common subjective understanding can come to be seen as objective truth. E. The meaning of leadership, therefore, evolves through the shared interactions of groups. I want you to think through all that. Well, let's look at something very important. Ways of understanding leadership. There's a picture there that I've put in which has got different things. Others understand leadership as uh, uh, dem democratic rules, uh, political rules, and uh, others understand it from the, uh, the civil society and all that. Then on the other hand, you see the contrast also of leadership, where we see somebody in the brain there, there is law, there is uh, mechanics, there is engineering, there is all kinds of things. The other side, there is money, there is what and all that. Because leadership stands at the center. Therefore, you are going to see to it that leadership is defined differently by the academics and leadership will be taken different by the non-academics. For example, as I want to look at ways of understanding leadership, these two worlds, they understand leadership differently. In the academics, others may understand leadership as a position. Because they look at the hierarchies that they find at the place of work. But others look at leadership as a system in which they grow into. So listen to this. Consider if leadership is the result of personal qualities or what the leader does to engage others do, to engage others. Do you need to be born a leader and have all those qualities? The question has always been asked. Can a leader be born or can a leader be made? Listen to this. Ways of understanding leadership. A, individualistic perspectives. A, individualistic perspectives. 
Leadership is a property or a set of properties possessed in very in varying degrees by differing people. This was said by Jago in 1982. Observed in leadership behaviors can be learned but is rooted in a person. This teaches us that leadership is properties. Okay? B. Outcome of what they do. So the first one I said, A. Leadership is understood as individually in individualistic perspectives. B. Outcomes of what they do. It's not about the person you were born to be. It's about making a difference. That's what the outcome says. Is there a different international impact of the leader on followers? Uh, are the actions shaped by context and or attribute, attributed in retrospects? Those are questions we should be asking ourselves. C. Leadership as a position. C. Leadership as a position. By default of their rank, these people can be a leader. It's not necessarily because of who they are or what they have done. They can be emergent leadership. In brackets, this develops over time through informal influence processes, e.g. shooting victims. When they are shooting victims, now they have a voice in a gun law discussions. Okay? Or assigned leadership allocated a position of the status, e.g., the queen, student, student representative. This you can be assigned. In our democratic countries, for example, if the husband becomes a president or a prime minister, you hear the wife being given a position of the first lady. It does not necessarily mean that they are automatic leaders, but they become leaders the fact that they are married to somebody who has aspired. Is the leader in charge or in front? Those are questions we should be asking ourselves. D. Leadership as a process. Leadership as a process. Process of influence that happens between leaders and followers. Far from our social contract of leadership. So harder to grasp it. Not about who you or what you do. It's how... It's, it's how social interactions generate leadership outcomes. Leaders always, leaders are always operating in relationships to their followers. So we need a holistic understanding of what leadership looks like as a bigger picture. Things happen due to these processes. A chain of events that lead to what the leader to, to, to that leader getting to that point due to the followers and people around them. Is leadership embodied in individuals or groups? And is it purely a human phenomenon? Well, 
I will end there today in our first module of discussing what leadership is. In our next module, I will be introducing to us theoretical models of effective leadership skills. Theoretic models of effective leadership skills. For now, I will, I've just posted up a diagram there which will help you to understand what are these things that I am talking about. An effective leader must be involved in what? And who is an effective leader? So, in a nutshell, in our second model, we are going to look at interactive thinking, goal commitment, network structures, and how all these things are intertwined in effective leadership. There you have it. I hope I hope that today's discussion has been able to confront some of the things which we need to do as leaders. Let me express my many thanks to all the students who have enrolled in this class. We are committed that you will finish this course. If you're having challenges, we will be there to help you. But at the same time, it is important for me to start the class and others will follow as we move on. This has been your friend, Dr. Nkoma here, signing off from the African Institute of Leadership and Governance. Thank you for joining in in today's class. I will see you again in your next modules as we continue to develop your leadership. Your assignment will follow you in your emails. I thank you. Bye.